In this video, I'm going to show you 25 essential keyboard shortcuts for Ableton Live 11. Now, learning the keyboard shortcuts of your digital audio workstation is a surefire way to save tens of hours every year of producing. It can make your workflow so much faster. So in this lesson, I'm going to share with you my 25 top Ableton Live keyboard shortcuts. This is taken from my course Ableton Live 11 for Beginners. So if you want to check it out, you can click the link below. Also, you can download a PDF of all of these keyboard shortcuts so you can refer to them as quickly and whenever you need. Okay, let's Let's get to it. So the first thing to notice is that you can actually assign your own keyboard shortcuts as well. So I'm going to get to these later on in this video and show you the ones that I personally assign. Okay, so the first essential keyboard shortcut you need to know is Command and S for save. And if you're using Windows, it would be Control and S. And that will save over the current project with any changes you've made. If you don't want to save over it, you can press Command Shift and S. And that is going to allow you to save it as a different file name. Again, if you're using Windows, whenever I say Command, just substitute that for Control. The next keyboard shortcut is tab to switch between arrangement mode and session mode. Very quick to do, very easy. The next is to switch between clip view and device view. So if you're in a piano roll editor, for instance, if you hold shift and tab, you then switch to any of the plugins on that channel and shift and tab again, will switch back to the piano roll editor or the audio clip editor if you're working with audio. Next is inserting tracks. So command and T will insert an audio track, command shift and T will insert a MIDI track, and Option Command and T will insert another auxiliary channel. See? Next, if you are using a MIDI track, you can press Command, Shift and M, and that's gonna automatically create a MIDI clip for you. Zero on the keyboard will automatically mute or deactivate a clip, and that works for both audio and MIDI, so you can just turn them on and off as you want. With Select Loop, you can drag and grab the selection that you want to loop and just press Command and L, and it's going to switch the loop brace to there. If you have your loop selected by clicking this bar up here, if you use Command and Up, it's going to increase the loop length, and if you press Command and Down, it's going to decrease the loop length. If you are in a MIDI track, you can toggle between Draw Mode by pressing B and turning that on and off, and that's useful so you can do things like grab and drag the velocity, and you have to be in Draw Mode to do that, then you simply press B to toggle back from it. One of the most important shortcuts to learn is Command and Z or Control and Z in Windows and that is going to undo and then Command, Shift and Z is going to redo that command. If you want to fine tune parameters, if you just drag normally, it's doing quite large increments. If you hold Shift, you can drag in much smaller increments. This is really useful, especially when you're working with automation nodes. If you are in the browser window, you can press Command and F and you will automatically jump to the search field. And if you want to toggle the browser window on or off, you can press Command, Alt and B, and that's going to just toggle it on and off like that. Two shortcuts here for the playhead. Usually in Ableton, it will start playing when you press space, but it will start from the beginning of the clip or wherever you've put that uh, playhead. If you press space again, it's going to start from that same place. If you press shift and space, it's going to keep playing from wherever it stopped. And the other shortcut is, if you don't want to play from the beginning of a clip, which it will even if you put the playhead somewhere else, you just have to press Option and press Space, and then it's going to play from wherever you place that playhead. If you're working in a MIDI clip, you can press Command and A, and it's going to select everything. And then if you press Shift and Up, it's going to put them up an octave. Or if you press Shift and Down, it drops by an octave each time. If you want to rename clips, you can press Command and R and then type in a name. And that goes for the same with your track names as well. Command and R will allow you to rename. Now, if you press Command and R, then Tab, it's going to move to the next track header so you can name that without having to click on everything and keep doing it that way. Now, the grid shortcuts are really important. You can see our grid here. And this is the same when you're in a MIDI clip as well. And if you press Command and 1, it's going to tighten that grid, make the grid lines uh, closer together. If you press Command and 2, they're going to spread out further apart. If you press Command and 3, it turns them to triplets. So you can see that's now split into 6 instead of 4. And then Command and 4 turns the grid off altogether. If you don't want to be turning off the grid, but you still want to move things off the grid, what you can do is you can click and then you can drag whilst holding Command, and it's going to allow you to move off that grid just for the time that you're holding and dragging. Next is consolidating clips. So if you've got lots of audio clips or MIDI clips, and they're all separate, and you want them to be just one clip, you can select the ones you want to consolidate, press Command and J, 
and that's going to just make them into one audio or MIDI clip. Now if the opposite is true and you want to split these clips, you can just select the place you want to split, then press Command and E on Mac OS or Control and E on Windows. One of the most useful is Command and D and that just duplicates the clip which is great for mapping out quick arrangements like that. And Command and G will group devices together and you can group within groups as well. So we've got this drum, this breakbeat and this arpeggio group. If we select them all, press Command and G, they are now in their own group. And to ungroup them, you press Command, Shift and G and it will ungroup. And that works within the racks themselves. So if we grab those together, press Command and G, they're grouped together, now Command, Shift and G, and then they ungroup. Now let me show you the custom shortcuts that I've made for my default project. So if you press Command and K, you can see this is where our keyboard commands are programmed in. I've just got four that I use all the time. The first is K, which I map to metronome on and off. The second I have mapped to this button here, which is loop on and off, and I just map that to L. The next I have, and this is one of the most useful, for me at least, is I have this preview button here mapped to P. And that allows you to hear which notes you are pressing or turn them off like so. And it's much easier to map a shortcut to that. And the final and perhaps one of the most important is I have a utility plugin mapped on the master channel. And if you've taken one of my courses, you already know this is how I work. But I have that mapped to option and M to just turn on this mono switch. And this is so I can check my mixes in mono very quickly, very easily. And then switch back to stereo just at the flick of a switch. So there you have it guys, those are my 25 essential Ableton techniques. I really hope you've enjoyed them. As I said, if you are interested in my Ableton Live 11 for Beginners course, you can check it out below this link and you can download a PDF with all these uh, shortcuts on completely free below this video as well. If you enjoyed it, smash like and consider subscribing to my channel for music production tips like this each and every week. And until next time, thanks for watching, cheers and happy producing. <laughs>